Alex, do you have that tweet that uh, the president put up about uh, Bob Corker uh, that you can put up there? Uh, yeah, see if you can find the one that he just tweeted out about him. Because there, we're talking about a lot of different things where the president just can't tell the truth. It's impossible for him to. Uh, uh, yeah, he said hey, Corker dropped out of the race when I refused to endorse him. Not true. Uh, uh, Trump was actually begging Corker to run for the Senate and made the phone call, and everybody knows that. Do you have the first one? Let's go to the first. Bob Corker, who helped President Obama give us the bad Iran deal. All right, so this is another example where Donald Trump just blatantly lies. Like, it is a matter of record that Donald Trump blatantly lies. Bob Corker voted against the Iran deal. And I per, I, I, Mika says off of, uh, from stage right that it's hyperbole, uh, but he voted against it. And then this is what Bob Corker said about the Iran deal before he voted against it. The Iran deal leaves the United States vulnerable to a resurgent Iran, wealthier and more able to do its will in the Middle East. He actually wrote that in August of 2015 in an opinion piece in the Washington Post. Congress should reject this Iran deal and send it back to the president. Bob Corker against the Iran deal. Now let's look at Donald Trump's tweet again. Bob Corker, who helped President Obama give us the bad Iran deal. I just want to stop here because this happens at such a rapid clip. The president objectively lies so much. And you can prove it. Like we, could, we could spend three hours a day just on his lies. But Mike Barnacle, here he says, Bob Corker, and he keeps saying it over and over again. It's the big lie theory. If you keep lying, over and over again about something, one day people will believe, believe it. So Donald Trump repeatedly says of Bob Corker, Bob Corker, who gave us the Iran deal. And as I said, uh, Bob Corker, actually, what does he do? He actually wrote an opinion piece in the Washington Post in August of 2015 saying the Iran deal is a bad deal. It will make Iran resurgent in the Middle East and it will be a serious problem and says Congress must reject the Iran deal and send it back to Obama. Joe, from these tweets that you're just reading, uh, from the tweets of the past week taking on a war widow, uh, is further evidence of the sad, sad fact that the President of the United States is not a complete man. He is not a whole individual, W-H-O-L-E, whole individual. And he has a gap in him, and that gap is without truth, it's without credibility, it's without empathy. So what, that's what the do, sad fact what of do, our lives. What do preachers, Willie, then, because a lot of preachers uh, are lined up behind Donald Trump. What, so that's a lie. It just, what I just showed was a lie, but I, I, we could literally spend a three-hour show five days a week showing you something that Donald Trump knowingly and willingly lied about and then put up a document that shows that it's a lie and shows that Donald Trump knows it's a lie. What do preachers and congregations across the Deep South that line up behind this man, what, what do they tell their congregations? Well, the What do parents tell their children? The argument used to be, and during the campaign, I don't know what it is today, is that he may not be one of us. You're talking about the churches now. He may not be one of us, but he will fight for us. He will protect our religious freedoms. And sure, there are things about him we don't like, and he's had some moral shortcomings, to say the least, but he's going to fight for us, and he's going to protect our religious freedoms, and it's better to have him in there than Hillary Clinton. What are they saying today? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how they're defending it. But there's nothing in that tweet that's true. There's not, none nothing. Of, none of that is true. In fact, Bob Corker led the opposition to the Iran deal. He had John Kerry in front of him in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and said, Mr. Secretary, you got fleeced by Iran in I this deal. I want to know what's happening in the White House. What is John Kerry Mr. doing right Mr. now? Mr. Secretary. What is the foreign policy team no. doing right now about this tweet? Because how can they develop policy? How can they organize the White House? How can they communicate to the press if the president is lying? Constantly, and again, the tweet so, needs so, to be taken down. Friends at home, I just again, this is just an exercise. This What's is, your job? This is this is an announcement uh, from the emergency broadcasting network <laughs> for presidents that can't tell the truth. 
again, I'm making a I'm making a much larger point, which is we could do this all day. We could look at what the president says, what Sarah Huckabee Sanders says, what Sean Spicer and used to say, even some things that and, John and, Kelly and sometimes said. at what John Kelly said, Sorry. what people say from behind that podium at the White House. We could do this all day. I'm only stopping to make a much larger point, which is the truth means nothing to this president. In fact, he really does believe in the big lie theory that if you repeat a lie over and over again, that maybe it can become the truth. It's just, I mean, there's so many examples of this in Donald Trump's life, but he's now bringing this to the White House. And again, Bob Corker, who again, vocally, as Willie said, had a showdown with the Secretary of State, John Kerry, and said, you and President Obama have been fleeced. And this is the op-ed that Bob Corker wrote for the Washington Post. Senator Bob Corker to Congress, reject the bad Iran deal. Not a great picture of Corker. Not a good picture, not a bad yeah, picture. I think the headline's a little ambivalent, Joe. It, it is now, let's show, you, so, so again, friends at home, uh, <laughs> we're now going to show you the first line of Donald Trump's tweet again. Uh, Bob Corker, who helped President Obama give us the bad Iran deal. With a bank shot of some sort. Yeah, so uh, again, John Meacham, the lying is constant. If we spent our days on Morning Joe documenting all of the lies that come out of the mouths of Donald Trump and Sarah Huckabee Sanders and everybody else at the White House, that's all we would do for three hours a day. And there are good people that go into that White House that leave scathed. You actually had uh, Sean Spicer say to Harvard students, right. I mean, which would be offensive, he said it to any students. Hey, my job was just saying what the president wanted me to say. To which a fellow naval uh, a naval officer said to him, no, no, actually, uh, that's not the case, shipmate. Uh, Admiral Kirby said, no, that's not what you do. No. T to my mind, it's, it's the most fundamental threat that the White House poses because you saw a poll over the weekend about extraordinarily high numbers of Americans believing that the media fabricate stories, tough word, fabricates. Um, he's created this universe where Nothing is real. What did Kellyanne call it? An alternative reality. Alternative, alternative, fact. Fact. alternative, alternative fact. fact. Alternative fact. Alternative fact. And Senator Cassidy, hyperbole. Hey. I just want to know: is that hyperbole? No, that's that looks like a blatant lie. You know, and no, it's he, something it's, that we have to. It's as though he's talking to you know a competing developer in Midtown, right? And it's just he just hasn't shifted. I was talking to somebody the other night about this. He said, you know, y'all think too much about this. This guy's a New York real estate developer. There are 10 families. They've been trying to kill each other forever. They lie all the time. This is what they do. And the, the issue, and this goes to your question about how do you, what, how do you talk to the kids about it, uh, preaching and all that, it, the corrosive distrust in institutions. We've been on a long 50-year cycle of this. 77% mm -hmm. of Americans trusted the federal government totally in 1965, 19% today. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, ex it's, it's hard to imagine you could exacerbate that, but he has managed to do it. He's doing it. One of the most remarkable things about this is no thoughtful United States Republican senator gave more forbearance to Donald Trump during the yep. early months of the administration yep. than Bob Corker. Yep. He went out of his way to, to try, try to work with him and to try yes. to help him privately, and now this. Yep. yep. Up next, a new documentary zeroes in on two key questions surrounding Russia's interference in the 2016 election. Why did Vladimir Putin see Hillary Clinton as such a threat? And why couldn't the Obama administration do more to shut down the attacks? We'll look for those answers next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.